Fairness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. I hope and trust I find you well. We have one more mountain experience to visit and enjoy for this morning as promised last time. And the mountain we shall visit has no name. We find this mountain in the book of Genesis chapter 12 and we shall consider verses 7 and verse 8. It reads as follows in the Amplified Version. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your posterity. So Abram built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. And in verse 8, From there he pulled up his ten pegs and departed for the mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. May the good Lord bless the reading of this word, even as we call upon his name this morning. Our heads are bowed, and we pray now. Kind and gracious Father, in the heavens above, we call upon your name early in the morning. Visit our hearts and visit our discourse. Fill it with thy spirit, so that all that we shall learn may draw us closer to you, and we may never be the same again. Dear Lord, you hold our tomorrow in your hands, and you are walking through today with us to lead us into a brighter future. Dear Father, may you hold us with thy right hand. This is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. My dear friends, I wish to raise just five points as usual. And at point number one, take note, God appears to Abraham and he wants to talk to him about concrete issues, things that are feelable, things that are tangible, things that he can relate to. And he says, Abraham, let us start with the land on which you stand. Let us start with the, with the land that you behold and see with your own eyes. This land I give to you. Not only am I giving it to you, I am going to have it held in trust for your posterity, for your children, for your generation. This is the God we serve. God blesses us and he says, child of God, what you have in your hand, I will keep in trust for your children. I will hold it in trust for the third, fourth and a thousand generations that will come after you. Why? Because I am a covenant-keeping God. I am a faithful God. I am the God who gives you title to land. And at point number two, not only is God giving a promise that relates to land, coupled in this promise is the promise of posterity. Rewind. By this time, Abraham has a wife, Sarai. Abraham is escorted or accompanied by his nephew, Lot. It is just the three of them. And God says, I will give this to your posterity. And these are words that are being said to a 75 year old man. And God speaks into his future and says, you have a tomorrow and I can see it. It looks brighter and I'm giving it to you. And your children shall be landlords. They shall be landowners. They are not only going to be vagabonds, but they are going to hold title to this land. And in point number two, how does Abraham respond? Abraham responds by building an altar to the Lord. That is an act of faith. When God responds with a promise, how do we respond to him? We respond by an act of faith, building an altar to the Lord and sacrificing and praising him and worshiping him. Such should be our attitude. We do not praise him because we have received a posterity. We praise him because he knows our tomorrow and he's been there and he's back into today. He is a God we can trust in spite of not receiving the land. At the time Abraham is being given this promise, he has not arrived at his destination and he still believes in the Lord who has appeared to him. And this morning, may God appear to you. May he appear to you and make your promises 
come true. And they begin even now. And at point number three, as Abraham has had an experience with God, notice how he leaves. He leaves the place headed for a clear destination. He does not just walk off. He knows where he's headed to. He is headed to the mountain. And this is a mountain that has no name. I tried to look it up in the King James Version. It is prefixed by a definite article, the mountain. Other versions will say Bethel, the hill country. But the King James Version is clear. And the Amplified Version is clear. He went for the mountain. What am I saying to you this morning? As you leave your encounter with the Lord, have a clear destination. Make it known you are not headed for level ground. You are headed for higher and higher destinations. May you continue to escalate. May you continue to rise. For you have been with the Lord. Let it be known from the day you walk into class that you're destined for a GPA of 4.0. May it be known the day you walk into your workplace, you are destined to be a CEO. The day you walk out of your company as a CEO, let it be known you are destined to make a multi-million, multi-corporation company headed for the mountains. You are a child of God. You are not headed to the valleys. You are not headed to the place. You are headed to the mountains. For the Lord we serve is the God of the mountains and he always calls us up to the mountain. God says, my son, have a clear destination. Even as we take time to rest over the weekend, think of the mountains, think of the mountain tops. That's where you belong. And at point number four, Position yourself strategically. Now, where does Abraham decide to position himself? He positions himself between Ai and Bethel. And these two places, Bethel named the house of God, Bethel, house of God. And Ai was a nation that he was yet to conquer. Not himself, but Joshua was going to conquer this. Visit Joshua chapter 8. And there at you find Joshua coming to the same position where Abraham located his hill. And Joshua as from that point, uh, you, you remember, you remember, you remember. This eye is the same story where Achan, Achan, yes, Achan actually stole goods from Jericho. And because of that, I conquered Israel for the first time around. The second time around, Joshua now comes back. And they conquer I and they destroy the city and it was never built. From that day, this became the territory of Israel. And true to point number one, God does bless us and he meets us and delivers to our posterity. And how did Abraham land at the end of the story? He builds an altar and calls upon the name of the Lord. May God help us. As we call upon his name one more time, may God help us as we commit our posterity into his care and keeping. May God lead us to our mountaintops, for this is our destination, to hold the land, possess, and exercise dominion. God bless you. God keep you. And may God keep you safe, blessings, and peace. See you next week.